All right, guys, welcome back into another NFL DFS video. Got the week nine picks here for you after another pretty solid week, but also after another week where Jimmy G was a big disappointment. And it kind of sucks. The so last week, it made sense to get on Jimmy G, and I kind of have the Sunday update, updates right here for you guys. So the logic behind getting on Jimmy G was that the weather was going to affect Derek Carr, who was the go-to play in cash last week, and it did. It definitely affected Derek Carr. He struggled and kind of got lucky with the uh, Hunter Renfro TD, which is kind of the receiver that I was favoring there for the Raiders, so kind of lucky there as well. But other than that, all the adjustments that we made were great with Joe Mixon and Aaron Jones ruled out. I really liked uh, Jamal Williams and Giovanni Bernard a ton. Um, then Brandon Ayuk and uh, Keenan Allen were pretty much locked in there. Um, made it kind of easy to profit with those two. And then really for defense, um, Patriots, Bills, Finns. But the one I went with the most was actually the Dolphins, which once again, more or less luck, but um, the strategy was there. And the strategy has been there this whole year. You know, you want to pay down for the defense that's going to, the lowest price defense that's not going to go negative. And last week that was clearly the Dolphins. So, it was easy to work out there. It was, it was great that it did. Um, we'll go lower here. So base right up. Aaron Rodgers liked the ton. Jimmy G, Drew Locke ended up hitting value. Derek Carr ended up hitting value. Um, then we got Alvin Kamara, easy play. Derek Henry, easy play. The tough part was kind of deciding between those two. Um, Jonathan Taylor, I specifically wrote this up because I'm all like, I really thought the Colts would come out of the bye week saying, we need to get Jonathan Taylor more touches. But if he doesn't get those touches, he's going to be a trap play. And that's what we saw end up happening. Jermichael Hasty got off of him when the Tevin Coleman news broke. Uh, Melvin Gordon got off of him when the Philip Lindsay news came. Then Damian Harris. I'm pretty darn proud of this one. 4.2. Great value option there for you. And he ended up paying off. Looked great. Only got 16 carries, which was kind of surprising. But looked great doing it. 16 DK points. That was great. Devontae Adams, Keenan Allen, Brandon Ayuk, the ones I wanted to pay up for the most. And, oh, who is that? Darnell Mooney. He was in there. Jacoby Myers. He was in there as well. Marquez Callaway was ruled out. Didn't end up being able to play him. Now, I said Raiders receivers. Um, I did want to be on Darren Waller the most. Um, but like I said, Ren Renfro was the one I went with. And then Darren Waller, Johnny Smith, Jimmy Graham, Drew Sample, Alex. I can't say it yet. Alex, though, or Alberto. Oh, he played fine. Um, Tight ends were really just a miss last week in whole, as a whole. And, you know, it didn't really matter too much there um, because we nailed we nailed the defense pretty good there. So um, pretty interesting week last week, um, profitable week. I will say the early slate once again last week was super easy to cash in. So it's great to kind of just split the two up between main slate and early slate. Sometimes you get an edge on the late slate, although we didn't have that last week. So... You know, it was a fun week last week, and we got another good one here. So let's get into the picks for this week, guys. All right, guys. So getting into the picks for this week, we'll start off on the quarterback end. And this is kind of the polar opposite slate of last week where it was very tough to find a great quarterback play, kind of one that you could trust. It's kind of like the slate two weeks ago, uh, quarterback-wise, where there's a bunch of really solid quality quarterback plays. Got Russell Wilson in a great spot uh, going against the Buffalo Bills. Obviously, they've been pretty poor against the pass. No mind him. Wilson actually below eight. K at that price point is very intriguing. You got Deshaun Watson going against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who have been pretty poor defensively. Watson retained all of his weapons, so I don't mind him this week. He's at a good price point. Uh, Josh Allen going against the Seahawks. You know, hopefully he's able to put it together, although I'm a little bit worried about him. We got to wait and see. I don't know. I think I'd rather just pay up for um, Watson and Wilson, but Josh Allen, obviously he's in a great spot. Uh, Matthew Stafford in a great spot against uh, Minnesota. Justin Herbert in a great spot. Just a bunch of quality plays at quarterback this week. Yeah, I don't really want to touch on those ones, play any of them, if that's kind of the way you're going, I will say. And I <laughs> kind of hate doing it, but Jake Luton there at that price point. I went back and watched some of his college film. I think he's going to be a little bit better than Gardner Minshew for the offense. In a matchup against the Houston Texans, this is perfect. This is nothing like the Nathan Peterman with the Bills situation where you throw him in against the worst def or against the best defense. Jake Lewin's going against one of the worst defenses, if not the worst. You look at the quarterback rating, um, completion percentage for the Houston Texans, this is probably the best matchup that any rookie quarterback can hope for. Obviously, we don't have any preseason data to go off of or film to go off of, so it is a risky play. But given the matchup, given the price point, I could see a lineup path where you're kind of throwing him in there, kind of hoping to get lucky, but he doesn't really have to do much to hit value. So really not a bad play there. Um, I don't think he will be. But I do like Derek Carr going against the Chargers. Yes, they have been a little bit better. 
12 DK points last week in that kind of tough weather game. I don't think that's going to be the case this week. He's kind of going to be the default go-to play, kind of, I think, here on out for a while. Just been very consistent fantasy producer. Makes a ton of sense in cash this week. All right, guys, so we'll start off the running back spot here with Delvin Cook. So Delvin Cook, you just look at his opportunities over the last four games. It's been absolutely crazy. Um, Just look at it, 33, 23, 29, and 27. That is an insanely high number. And he's been dominating with those touches. I mean, almost every game over 30 DK points. I uh, had 20 pretty much against Seattle. Just phenomenal. It really done everything you could ask for with Dalvin Cook there. He gets the Detroit Lions who, yeah, DK says that they're the 32nd worst uh, rush defense there. That's just because they've been giving up a ton of touchdowns. And honestly, I just don't see that not happening again this week. So Dalvin Cook, I think we just kind of have to work our way figure out a way to pay up for him. So after that, James Conner does make a ton of sense for me. The guy has been very consistent as a fantasy producer. Other than week one where it's looking like that was just an injury, he's been able to get put up 14 or more fantasy points per game. Going against the Dallas Cowboys, this is a game that the Pittsburgh Steelers should be up in, and I expect him to at least be able to score 20 DK points in this one. So I really do like uh, James Conner. Then after that, we kind of figure out what the injury situation is going to be for Miami. Um, it's looking like Miles Gaston's out. We already know that. Matt Breida didn't practice today when I was making this video as of Wednesday, so we've got to wait and see on the news on that. He'd be the go-to play if he is going to be active and going to be playing. Patrick Laird's also out, so kind of just de facto play right now is going to be uh, Jordan Howard. So we've got to wait and see on the injury news on that, but really you just got to have to play who's ever going to be the starter in that situation. And after that, there is one other running back that I do want to touch on. It's a guy that's been very consistent. Um, as the week goes on, this is going to change probably. But David Montgomery right now is one of the better kind of lower price safe plays at the running back spot. Been putting up over 10 DK points each and every week pretty much. That's what you want to see. The opportunities continue to be there. Um, easy matchup going against Tennessee. I just don't see them not getting him involved. And they've given him a ton of targets since Tory Cohen's been out. 5.7, not going to kill you. Pretty solid here, guys. We're locking in probably at least like 70 opportunities here with these uh, three running backs, which is what you want to do. I mean, 60 opportunities, 50 opportunities, that's kind of the min that you want to shoot for. And it seems like we're going to get 70 opportunities from those three. Makes a ton of sense. Now let's move on to the receivers here. So receivers, don't want to touch on Jandrew Hopkins, Diggs. Those are going to be fine plays. If you guys want to play them you can they make a ton of sense but i do want to talk about keenan allen here so since he's been active and healthy and finished the full game and since justin herbert started keenan allen has seen over 10 targets per game which is an absolutely insane number just using that same data point he's averaged over 20 dk points per game in those games as well so you know keenan allen at seven Locking in around 10 targets, <laughs> locking in around 20 DK points just makes a ton of sense. I love Keenan Allen this week. Um, after that, not a ton that I love, um, but I will say DJ Chark, I do like a decent amount. I already talked about Jake Luton in that plus matchup. Last few games, let's just look at it. Seven targets, 14 targets, four targets, which was kind of surprising against Houston, but Gardner Minshew has looked horrible, guys. He just looked bad pretty much over the last month, and that's why they had to make the quarterback change because Minshew just – he had been missing wide open receivers. He had been missing touchdown passes, ones that should be easy. Heck, ones that you and me could probably make, but not. let's not go there. Nine targets in week four against Cincinnati. The thing is that DJ Chark is due for a big week, um, and at 5.2, that's well worth the risk there. So makes a ton of sense there. And then after that, we got to wait and kind of see what the value situation is going to be this week. Darnell Mooney at a good price point, 3.9 going against Tennessee. I do like that. Um, he, we got lucky a little bit last week that he scored a touchdown, uh, but the targets have been there five, five, seven, six. So not a bad play at his price point. Still got to wait and see on uh, some other injury news that's going to pop up. We'll say the Lions situation is one that we need to monitor and then one that we'll touch on, on the Sunday live stream. So definitely stay tuned for that. Moving on to tight end here. So tight end, I do really love Noah Fant this week going against the Atlanta Falcons. They're one of the worst, if not the worst, against tight ends so far this year. The targets continue to be there for Fant, 9, 7, 6, 10. And there's going to be a week where he is the one scoring the touchdowns. Albert O had a touchdown last week. He is just due for a massive week, and it could easily come against the Atlanta Falcons, who we know are horrible against 
the pass. So Noah Fant at 4.6, really not that priced up for the amount of targets that he's been getting and the amount of consistency he has been able to produce as a starter as well. So go ahead and put him into your builds. Should be a good week for him. But if it's not going to be him, let's try to find another one for you guys because, you know, he's just got to have another one out there for you. All right, guys, so if you didn't want to pay up for Noah Fant at that price point, I think 4.1 for Hayden Hurst, kind of a similar play where the targets have been there with Calvin Ridley questionable. I think that would favor Hayden Hurst a little bit more if Ridley does sit, but we've seen it seven, seven, and six targets three of the last four weeks. Um, been over 10 DK points in three straight weeks. So Hayden Hurst at that price point does make a decent amount of sense. Right now, I haven't been able to find a tight end value that I feel good about or a receiver value that I feel good about. I will have that available probably next tomorrow really honestly when the more injury news comes out so that'll be available on the nine to five sports page if you guys want to join nine to five sports it is ten dollars a month it's a simple easy approach to help you guys cash to help you guys become a better player and be on the right players there's a lot of fluff out there with nfl dfs just a lot of content and information people are trying to spew out to you it's not needed just need the right plays and that's what we give you guys so hope you guys join if you don't please give me a like and subscribe i do appreciate that and as always guys let's keep cashing